The Wood Chop is sponsored by Welcome back. Well, this was Friday's project, this maple and walnut urn, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. It almost looks like the sketch I did, which doesn't happen all the time. And that was one of the questions on how I work through like a project like this where I, where I don't have plans. So you notice in the video that this arm was much bigger when I when I first started, and I just kept cutting away at it until it, it the proportions are right. And a lot of times that's what I'll do. I'll make something you know, a little bit larger than what it needs to be until it till it uh, evens out. And on the, as far as going through there, I was never going to try and weave the thing through there. And I'm not even sure if it would go through there because the holes were, were so small. But it would take up volume on the inside, and I didn't didn't want that. I was always going to do it in the in the two pieces there. Um, and as far as you know, the base, I just kind of pencil it out and you know see what's what fits right on on the, the for the size of the piece. You don't want to make it too small or too big. And my original plan was I was just going to make a round one. I mean, I didn't have anything there on the sketch, but that's what I was going to do. And then I got to thinking about it after I got it together that I needed something out here. So it, once you fill this, there, there's going to be a lot of pressure going that way. And I didn't want just a little round base. I wanted some support over there, and that's why I did that. Um, and I like the way it came out, but I just kind of you know work through it and, and a lot of times I'll make something a little bit larger than it needs to be and just keep carving away at it or sanding away at it until it until it comes down and somebody asked me I will put a link down below in the description to a app where you can figure out the the segment ring and segment ring is so they wanted to know when I did the genie bottle so I just again I I found a picture on the internet of you know the basic shape of a genie bottle and then I cut some test pieces to see the diameter but there's a there's an app where you can just punch in how many segments you have and it'll tell you what size to cut them so you can determine what what size ring you want so I think that's I don't know probably six if you want an eight inch ring it'll tell you to cut them an inch and a quarter or what whatever it is so that's that's how you can figure that out but when you're doing something round like that you want that center ring you notice in the genie bottle that i you know it was off but it needs to uh you can figure that out with that app where you can slowly drop down on on the segment and rings and with the the little ones around the neck i just same thing i think i did a couple of test ones to figure out the the size i need but that app will really help you out and you won't have to do any test ones especially if you're using the uh, sag easy the sled the segmenting sled you won't have to do test anymore um, the band drift on the bandsaw uh, a couple people mentioned it Ron and, and somebody else uh, when I was cutting the large block here's real quick I'll show you uh, on the bandsaw let's jump over there real quick all right so a fence that comes with a bandsaw is pretty much useless the only reason I use it is to measure so I was cutting a seven inch block I came over seven inches and started my cut with it and the reason I just I kept loosening it up was because bandsaws have what it's called drift so in order to compensate for that you don't need the fence at all and I don't even know why I still have it just just to measure but I could have done the same thing draw drew a line down that that big block but here's what you do they all have drift you draw a straight line down a down a board and just I just took my fingers and, and drew that line down there it doesn't matter so I'm gonna turn the bands on come in halfway and it's gonna be at an angle and all bandsaws have this I maybe if you get into some huge ones they might not but even this is a pretty big blade on there too and it's uh, and it still still does it that's a half inch blade and it still still comes over so I'm going to cut into this halfway and then I'll show you how to set up for that Okay, so if I were to slide the fence back over, you'd see that it, it hits here before it hits here. So what you do is take a just a straight board. That This isn't a straight piece, but if you're cutting something straight, go ahead and bring it over like that. Lock that down. Come over on the other side here. 
clamp and lock this down. So if you're resawing a big piece, like I had that, that seven inch piece in here, you would do the same thing, but just make a taller fence and you need to figure out what the drift is. So this is, so right here we're looking at, I'm just kind of eyeballing this, we're a little under three inches and over here we're a little under three and a half. But if you watch, it'll follow that line all the way down now. And if I break the fence over, and I can't because the clamp's there, but we're, you know, inch, uh, inch and a quarter there, and inch and three quarters right there. So it's definitely off on it. But if you want to saw it, you know, something like, uh, you know, some thin strips like veneer or something, you need to do the same thing. Just make yourself a taller fence to do that so it supports it all the way up. That is why in the video I just kept loosening that up as I was cutting through it because it was following the blade. So just keep that in mind if you want to resaw something, you need to set up a fence. Um, most of what I do is just turning, so I'm going to put it on the lathe anyway, so I rarely set up a fence or anything. Um, another question was the lacquer. Here's a quick little shot. I just took a paintbrush, put on about three coats in the side of there, just kept building it up so that it filled in any little voids that might have been in the burl, but there, it's pretty solid. Uh, the only real spots were around here, and I glued those up from the inside a couple of times so that it sealed that, and then I put the lacquer on, and it works works pretty good it, you know you put a few coats on it, it it does a good job and it just just uh it pretty easy to do all right i had uh oh the mask the mask and that hang on one sec so the mask the rz mask i will put a link down below in the description to their website again you go through that link comes with a carrying case an extra filter very happy with it. I've been wearing it around the shop doing doing other things, sanding and stuff, not just on the lathe. Um, I don't know, it keeps the dust out and doesn't fog up my glasses. It's much more comfortable than uh, the paper one and even some of the, the bigger hoods. It goes right underneath your, your uh, face shield and I'm very happy with it. So I will put a link down below to their website uh, in the description again and I will be wearing it all the time you'll probably see me oh i had a question about this so this little guy um i picked this up five six years ago it's what i used to make my mirrors with the the wavy mirrors i put this on a, on the drill and run around them so what this is is rubber uh bladder here on the end there and just a bicycle you know like a bicycle uh uh, valve to fill it up you hit it with your air compressor it fills this bladder up and the reason I use it and like it, especially for stuff like this, is I don't fill it up all the way. I just put a little bit of air in it and it's gushy. So it almost wraps around whatever little piece you're doing. I would really like a bigger one of these, probably like a two or three inch one. It would be really nice to just put a little bit of air in it and it would cup around. Using the orbital sander and stuff it's just straight and it, it doesn't work very well but i really like this i picked it up at, i believe it was grizzly um i don't know if they have them anymore but it's nice it's got bearings in the handle there so if you're using it on a drill you can just hang on to it and, and work your way it works great on the lathe just bring the tail stock up and this thing spins so it's all good and uh the, oh the uh, hollowing system it, i was using a lyle jameson's hollowing system to to get the wall thickness when i was using that and i was just using the laser i left the wall thickness on this thick i didn't go down very thin if it was just a solid piece with no stand like that i would have gone much thinner but i needed some support there so i left it a little over a quarter of an inch the whole whole thing i didn't just kind of use the laser to you know make see when i was getting close to the edge but you can bring it down to you know eighth of an inch or something with that thing but i just was trying to get it get it close and uh, so that it had some support so it wouldn't break, you know, once you filled it up or if it got moved or something, there was definitely some wood in there. Um, all right, I think that is about it um, for 
that stuff. Oh, I want to thank all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, guys, for this month. I really appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for your support. Everything, you know, from my Etsy store to just liking and sharing the videos. I really appreciate it. It, it, it all helps out. So thank you again. All right. I want to share some pictures and some videos. I have Gary. Actually, Gary came over to the, the shop last week and he bought a little lathe I had and he sent me some pictures of this checkerboard bowl he did. I've seen these on the internet before on, I believe it was on woodchuckers. I saw, saw um, somebody had made one, but he had one and he just finished it up and emailed me and sent me some pictures. So very nice, Gary. And Jason did this beautiful box. Nice job, Jason. And he put a lid inside of it too. It is beautiful. Um, and uh, uh, Caleb, oh, Caleb did a video. I'll put a link down below to his channel, his new channel. And he did this bowl. I believe it was Ash. Not, I can't remember. I forgot to write it down. But anyway, I'll put a link down below to his, his channel and you can go watch the video. And Chuck, and Chuck sent me this. He made this urn for his mom. Beautiful job, Chuck. It's very nice. All right. And uh, Mike, Mike Fulton, he did uh, uh, Sucker Tree. So he took a bunch of scraps he had. He was trying to get rid of a shelf in his shop and he made a Sucker Tree. Very nice project, Mike. And I will put a link down below to Mike's channel and you can go check out that video. It was kind of cool. Be neat for, I don't know, craft, craft fair or something like that too. I think it'd be, be a fun project. So, and he just used a bunch of scrap wood to do it. All right, I believe that is it again for this week. I will, uh, I got, uh, Got a fun video coming up. Uh, I think I'm going to do it on the main channel. Maybe Wednesday, Wednesday or next week we're going to have a, have something coming up. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments. And I will answer them on next Monday if I can. Or I will try and figure it out by then. All right. If this is your first time here, I have a new project video every Friday on my main channel. The link is at the end of the video and down in the description. All right. Take care.